Hello and welcome back once again to Faros's little jaunt across Drang Lake. We find ourselves here at the opening of the Iron Passage, about to enter the challenge route for the uh, DLC. Not particularly happy with the design of this area, but it works to a certain extent. Something I want to just bring up before I begin is that I've adjusted the loadout some. I've grabbed a few uh, dark arrows as well as cleaned out the inventory to just the weapons that I'm actually going to be considering using. Basically, if the weapon isn't in my inventory right now, then I haven't acquired it yet, or I'm just not going to be using it in this playthrough. Pretty much guaranteed. There are a few that I am still looking to grab, such as the uh, Black Knight Greatsword that can be grabbed right after the Belfry Saul, but I haven't taken the time for that just yet. I just got the numbers in now for the PvP video that I recently re released, and good lord, I was not expecting it to be quite such a hit. It's the first video I've released to break 300 views, and wow, just I'm really taken aback. Thank you all so much for the wonderful reaction. I even grabbed quite a few extra subscribers out of that. Really was not expecting that, but I will take... Oh, dear. I'm going to disagree with that out of hand, but yeah, no, I took that one. I don't know how that attack didn't stagger the... Like, didn't actually hit the other guy, but... Maybe I just need to learn its hitbox a little bit better. This is my first time using the... Uh, what you call it? The butcher's knife for a lot of PvE, so... I'm not entirely used to its moveset, even though I do technically know how it works and how to use it. I honestly expected that hit to have a bit of a larger hitbox, but it did not, so we're going to have to try that again. How much do these dark arrows do? Uh, it's respectable damage. That lunging attack is a great way to catch the enemies off guard before they've reached you and they're very bad at getting hung up on corners so use that to your advantage and you should be able to get some advanced swings in. I always trigger this first ambush because it has seven large titanite. Like, that is a ridiculous amount of large titanite. You want to grab that every time you pass through this area. But aside from that, there's not very much for you loot-wise down the optional path. It is a little bit more clear of enemies, but so long as you're playing cautious, you can kite most enemies to a safe location and just face them there. Which is what I intended to... Oh, dear. And then they start fighting me in a group. Oh, yeah. Nope. Well, then. Hmm. Let's try and take this on a little bit smarter. It's actually kind of frustrating, because it's Thus far, I'd gone through the entire DLC without dying, and here I am starting an episode with a pair of deaths. I am going to forestall humaning up, even though I generally like to advance into most locations with my human visage. I'm going to give that a miss just for this moment while I try and perfect this first little section. Roll away. Okay. Parry you, and immediately get the repost. That's most of this area clear. If you actually get up close to the ledge, they have not the tracking to uh, aim at your head, and so their spells usually... Oh, there we go. Usually hit the ledge on their way to you. And when they drop down, you can do whatever you like. The world is your oyster at that point. I want to circle around here. I am going to be using the smelter sword to clear most of this area because I want to save my physical weapons durability for the smelter 2.0. He's nice and gives you an immediate backstab, but this can be a bit tricky because it's a very... Oh dear. It's a very open crevice that you find yourself in. And so, yeah, most of the ranged attacks that are coming your way are going to sh shoot right on through that gap, unless you're being 
incredibly cautious about it. And aggroing these guys is also a bit of a pain. Come on. Follow me. This way. Lovely. There we go. Oh! He dropped down on... Nice... Oh dear, this is... This is... Probably the worst case scenario for Blinding Bolt. Being caught in this... Small enclosed space. Oh dear. There we go. Whew. This area is... Designed to kill you if you're going in solo. And... Well, I get that. I don't have to like it. I'm just gonna run on through. Don't want anything to do with him, especially because there's this guy to contend with. But running around to unlock pretty much guarantees you a nice little backstab if you're aiming it correctly. And this is the last section, so I want to see if I can snipe him. Oh, he ducked. What a cheater. Yeah, I can't trade hits with that as much as I would love to. The absolute worst thing about Tranquil Walk of Peace, Promised Walk of Peace, sorry, in, oh dear, in Dark Souls 2, is that it actually increases your weight instead of your walk speed, which means that you actually have reduced stamina regen while you're under its effects, which is a far worse punishment than the actual move speed debuff is, at least in my own personal opinion. I want you to just, ooh, that's less than I'd like. Yeah. Is all that's left a, uh, hmm. I'm pretty sure all that's left is one big smelter, buddy, indeed, which means I can run out, grab this item, and head on into the boss room. Ouch. He takes a while to really get his act together, which allows you to come right on in. I am going to unequip the smelter sword, because it's going to be absolutely worthless in this fight and just going to slow me down. And now we have smelter 2.0. Because I've got a nice physical weapon with really quick swing speed, I don't think he'll be too much of an issue, especially since the passive effect of the butcher's knife is a bit of HP steal on hit which means that uh, Smelter's aura isn't going to affect me nearly as much as the average player. I do want to get the poison off just because I know it only takes four hits, so one more isn't going to be too bad. And just start getting some extra damage on him when he's locked up in his animations. The length of the ooh, Butcher's Knife is actually really nice, so it allows you to snag him even when he's jumping away. I have no extra things I could do to really make the fight easier while he's doing that, so just get some free damage. I already have him poisoned. Oh, he's already shrugged off the poison? That delayed attack can really catch you. Like, I was expecting to be hit by it that time. One, two, oh dear. Three, and four? Uh, probably a poor trade. Especially because it kind of messed me up there. Good heal, though. And I managed to get the poison on him, so I can not have to worry about that at all. At this point, I've pretty much got him down. It's just a matter of dealing with that last little segment of his life bar. Oh, the rolling attack did not redirect, and so carried me right past him. You can actually walk out of some of his attacks, so... Oh, dear. Oh, I rolled too early, and I took it right to the face. And I... <laughs> and I get the smelter crotch. <laughs> oh, that is glorious. That's one of those... That's one of those secret, hidden moments. Those moments that just kind of happen during the course of the game, and you, you really can't see coming. Uh, that's, that is pretty great. Smelter crutch to the face for the BM at the end of the fight. However, I have had enough of this place's crap, so I'm actually gonna see if I can 
head down this side route. Normally, I would actually just say screw this. I don't want it. It's difficult to time those roll. Oh my god, and I got hit even. So, but I am a little bit overconfident because I just managed to uh, get right on through, and so that's making me do silly things. And I'm okay with that because it means I don't have to deal with going a little bit slow. I also just want to grab all this loot because no matter what I say, I, I still want the loot. I mean, nothing's going to change that. Let's see if I can have a look and see the, yeah, that little dark patch right there. Oh, nope, not that dark patch at all. It was an entirely other dark patch. <laughs> I was trying to get a look see at the fume sorceress before she spawned again, but no such luck. Running from this second area isn't so terrible, so I am actually just going to unlock this, fight all these guys, and then head on to smelter the regular path from there. Because I do want to grab the loot that's down the second area. That follow-up combo is so nice, especially because you can engage in that combo from so far away. Yeah, ignored. Whack you, and, oh, not quite, but one hit's all it's going to take for both of them. Really nice trade. Small orange bird, in case I want to take that into the smelter fight. Though, to be honest, I'd probably prefer a green blossom. Torches. Is there anything actually useful down here? I don't remember. All I remember is being very unenthused by all the... Yeah, just a simpleton spice. It's, it's nice, but it's not worth the trouble, if you ask me. I honestly just hate these side paths, and nothing's going to change my opinion on that. But this does mean I can run right on over here ignore you and is there anything actually over here oh yes that's right there's this little drop down oh, okay oh where is my backstab where is my backstab thank you kind oh is there a there is which means I need to book it my time is over with you oh goodness well, it's still only two Estes to, that I'm starting the fight down, so that's, that's not too bad. I wish I could get some poison off on the boss while he's waiting there all nice and tidy for me, but no such luck as I had to spend that time healing. The timings are just so different with Smelter now. That's two. I believe it's only going to take two more to s poison him and I can get those off when he's buffing next. Which should be any moment now. Probably after my next combo hits. Let's have a look-see. Really? Usually he buffs by now. I am definitely waiting for it, but this is as good a time as any to get those extra ones off. Oh, now he buffs after I poison him. Real nice, Smelty. Just just for the BM. Serves him right. I should not have followed that up with a swing. That was a bad idea on my part. It's really just about focusing and not getting greedy. As are most boss fights, but... Smelter especially, because he seems like he's a really slow and lumbering boss. And then his swing just catches you off guard, and you take, like, two-thirds of your health in a single swing. Especially because he has a lot of delayed combos and uh, really quick bursting ones like that. Like, the rest of his attacks have a much larger lead-up than that, and so they kind of get you used to waiting... Oh, dear. Waiting for him... And then he just brings one of those out just so quickly like that. It's very difficult to adapt to. Yeah, I probably dodged a bit early on that one, but it worked out for me. Managed to clip him there. Probably could have gotten better sweet spot damage, but it's no matter. 
two more hits. One, t oh, oh, come on. No, no smelter. There we go. Thought I almost mucked it up there. That would have been the saddest thing. Get another smelter soul, just in case I want to dual wield smelter swords. <laughs> because that's not a silly idea at all. It, it really is. I'm, I'm joking. But there we have the Pharos Mask. This wonderful bit of equipment for all you giant dads out there. It's a little bit, a little bit uh, nostalgic. It's an incandescent father is what that is. But this is a mask depicting Pharos's contraption. Tears flow from the eyes of the mask, drenching its wearer. The majority of Pharos's creations are perplexing to reasoned men, and this mask is no exception. The tear effect that it speaks of is actually a 100 point increase in fire defenses as well as poison will no longer stick to you when you're traveling through poisoned waters namely those in Harvest Valley and uh, whatchamacallit Earthen Peak, that's right sometimes it's hard to call upon those really early game levels when I'm so far into the game like this. The one thing I will say is that they do reward you handsomely for taking the time to do that side path. Whole lot of souls to spend right here. And while levels cost an arm and a leg at this point, I am getting really up there. The idea is going to be to get my attunement to 20 and my magic stats to 30-30, and that's basically all the levels I'm really gonna want. I could go higher than that, but at that point the build kinda feels complete. I was originally intending only to use Dark and Pyromancy, but after a few discussions about Frouse's character and what little we know of it, I decided that it might fit a bit better if I grabbed one spell of every type. Be it regular sorceries, regular pyromancies, uh, regular faith spells, miracles, or just regular hexes. One of everything seems to be what I'm going to be going with once I reach full end game with this character. Right now I'm still building up the stats to handle that, as well as the, uh, you know, I do want to grab that lizard, so let's head right back down. And by head right back down, I mean jump to my death, so... <laughs> Falling is OP. I've, I've said it before, I will say it again. Ah, gravity. From soft, please nerf. <laughs> oh dear. Let's, let's try that again, but without the, uh, the falling to your death part this time. Unless in the lack, it kind of necessitates that it's a one-way trip. Because jumping back onto the elevator from this location is actually kind of difficult, but the butcher's knife is absolutely beautiful for taking out those lizards. Gets me a full three chunks and three twinkling titanite, what's not to love, really great, and some bright bugs. If I'd have slapped a bright bug on during that first fight with Smelter, it would have gone much smoother. I would have been able to take probably at least one extra hit, as well as having finished him off a lot faster. So, something to keep in mind, don't forget your consumables. But now I can head right back up that same elevator and start grabbing some of the areas higher up in the level. Right now, I'd, as of that point, I'd kind of ignored the elevators completely and just gone about my merry way with everything else, but I do actually want to grab all the side areas and loot especially because there's at least one or two oh is that not enough maybe if I'd have had full stamina what what did I change about oh the f oh that's right the forest mask I don't have the uh, the weight capacity for it with this build at least with these two massive weapons considering they weigh 22 and 16 each it is kinda crazy but uh... let's 
Let's see. That doesn't change much. And I, yeah, that's right. Let's swap out the ring of blades because it's not helping too much on either of these huge weapons. Grab this. Roll out of the way after taking some fire damage. You know what? Let's open this door real quick just so that I don't have to come all the way back up the elevator system for this run around, but give it a sec just to wait for that flame to dissipate. You are going to have to pass through the flame on your way back, but this still allows you to grab the simpleton's ring without taking fire damage on the first half of your journey. Fill that all up to full so that I don't have any Estus down as I proceed on, and that also means that these guys respawn, but you can just jog right on by. They don't care too much about you. You're a distraction at worst. Come over here, and this should be the smelter enemy with the warmth of Nishandra. Nishandra of Nadalia. And yes, I was correct. Luckily, this weapon does a bunch of quick swings. And while it is kind of stamina intensive, I should, you know, actually... It's not looking like that's going to be enough. Let's try getting some poison damage on this guy. I have poison arrows for a reason. Toss in a poison throwing knife. Is it is it not enough to poison him? There we go. I was like, can he even be poisoned? I haven't tried with these guys, so I didn't know how... Oh yeah, he could be poisoned, and it really helps to counteract that warmth effect. Ooh, thought I could get that last hit off before he was healed back up. And I could, it just took a second, so. That's him taken care of. Didn't waste any healing at Oh, that's right, there's nothing in that first door, just the last three. And boy, is there stuff in the last three. A whole bunch of Titanite shards, petrified something, broadsword. Over here is going to be three Titanite chunks and a slab right behind these barrels. Yep. That means throughout this whole DLC I've already grabbed enough upgrade stones to upgrade a single regular weapon from 0 to plus 10. And right there was the life ring plus 3. The best use anyone's figured out for that thus far is to completely negate the seppuku buff of the uh, of Alon's Gatana. I don't n remember exactly what it's called, but whatever Alon's great katana is. The seppuku attack that it has that... Uh, oh, let's catch that. Because I want this pilgrim spawn tune. It might be what I use as a catalyst for my hexes and magic, but I've yet to commit one way or another. Either way, it's still just a nice weapon to have. Drop off here, I believe. Yes, this is the place. Wait for this elevator. I do actually have the tower key, so I can just head right on up and activate the bonfire after the prowlers. Tag that on my way up so I can get it on my way down. It's a pretty simple concept. As I was saying, the uh, seppuku debuff, I mean, the seppuku buff that Alon's great katana prox takes about uh, however much the life ring gives so if you're wearing the life ring when you enter an arena fight and then use the buff and immediately take off the life ring you'll basically have no lost no health you will actually have lost some but it's negligible just get him staggered so I can combo him out oh. Come now. That's not very nice. You're going to heal up. I'm going to heal up. So you like it. Great swords just have the strongest crit hits. Some mad warrior armor. It's really nice. I'm not even wearing any item discovery gear. Kind of surprised that the very first prowler gave me that. So I will take it. But once you've got him out of the way, you can deactivate that. If you're feeling just like not dealing with that, you can 
easily take that out before killing the Prowler as well, but I just wanted to have him done with. These guys, while there are more of them, are heavily nerfed versions of that first Prowler. But I don't think that's going to do it for me. Let's see if I, I wanted to catch them on the corner there. But they don't want to let me. However, if they're going to just form a nice little line for me like that, who am I to say no? Swing, swing. And another. That's just another Mad Warrior armor, but still. I remember people complaining about the sparsity of those drops and from soft delivered that just seems like one of the, oh that should have hit it was like right on the cusp sadness visions of sadness but yeah that's all of the prowlers there and that allows you to come right on up and activate Alon's armor bonfire which will be important for when we eventually head down and defeat Raim I'm not actually going to rest at the bonfire because I have another area that I want to ta uh, take on, but those two Estes that I used are not going to be of consequence, especially because I'm probably not going to lose too much health in the encounter since the environmental hazard actually takes out most of the enemies or at least brings them low enough that they're a non-issue. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about when I head back on through. Oh! Oh! I thought that I could make that, and I thought wrong, so let's, let's go up and do that again. Come on in through here. Uh, <laughs> this, I don't know how that happens. Sometimes you just get stuck trying to open a door. But these bullheads can actually be knocked and will flame their way through the entire level, completely missing that hollow. Nice. Well, if you want something done right, do it yourself. Let's take care of that, shall we? Ooh, and a Titanite chunk. Those undead not undead, but possessed armors are notoriously stingy with their drops, so I'm just getting kind of lucky today. I'm really surprised by this. Certainly not complaining, but it's just kind of strange. It feels out of character for Dark Souls. This guy manages to avoid the uh, little jet of flame there quite nicely almost every time and if I can convince him to head the right way he will unlock the dispelling ring plus one for me like that this lovely little secret here gives me a full extra 120 is it? I believe it's somewhere around there but a bunch of extra elemental defenses are there any explosive barrels I can take advantage of? There are those, which do a little bit of nice damage there. He should... oh. <laughs> I was going to say he should fall to just that one plank, but clearly not. I was talking about his ally. Oh. You know, I thought his health was lower than that. Maybe it was a hollow behind him. Either way, he's taken out. And now I can deal with these two. Fairly simple. Just come in. Oh, we've got a dark spirit. How lovely. For the occasion, um, mm, I really don't want to have all this heavy equipment slowing me down, but I don't really see an alternative. It looks like I'm just going to have to accept my loadout and face him as I am. Definitely going to grab the hollow mask on my way down. Hopefully he hasn't found me yet. 
can't imagine that he has. He's only been here for just a few moments, and the entirety of Broom Tower is actually a very, very large area. It can be very difficult to find anyone here, to be honest. It's one of the less friendly bits about its design. Don't know why they chose to do that, but whatever. It's still a great game, still a great design. I happily accept it. Come down here. Hopefully he knows to come to the bonfire. Or maybe that's not actually a thing. I don't rightly know. Anyways, if he's not going to catch up to us, then I don't see why we should bother with him. So let's just continue clearing the level as normally and see if he manages to find us on our way. And it sounds like the best plan of action for this. These old knights, again, so strange, because we know these aren't THE old knights. They're just empty husks of armor modeled after the old knights. Why the old Iron King was making massive super soldier looking husks of armor based on knights of a foreign land? It's kind of strange. Don't rightly know, one way or another. But it does date the Old Iron King to the same time period as Hyde, which means that it's just another nail in the coffin for anyone trying to espouse the... Oh. You know, I wasn't thinking about this when I started this, but I'm actually running really low on weapon durability. Let's actually fix that up. This is going to be like, what, the second repair powder I've used the entire game on this character? Yeah. They don't make you use repair powder often, but if you're cocky like I was just here and decide to drop on down without resting at a bonfire... Oh! Well then. Ethan lucked out. I don't know how the camera snagged my view over to the sword wielding hollow though. I should have just done two quick hits onto the axe wielder and been able to then 1v1 the sword wielding hollow, but it seemed like my camera had other plans for me. I don't quite know how that happened and it's it is slightly frustrating, but there's not much to be done about it at this point. Nothing but go back down there, retrieve my souls and keep on going. So, let's let's do that now. As I was saying, there aren't many places where you need to use a repair powder. They give you bonfires free... Oh. <laughs> Turns out I missed the spell quartz ring plus three, but I can grab that any time. It's right next to the foyer bonfire, and I am going to have to revisit that at least twice in order to uh, kill the two shards of Nidalia that are up by the foyer, both the one in the tower with Maldron the assassin, as well as the one that's uh, in the locked door right in the foyer itself. So it's not like I'm not going to be coming back anytime. But yeah, they space the bonfires such that you never usually run out of stamina on durable weapons like, oh gosh, oh dear. That could have been terrible. It could have been really bad. This can still be really bad. I don't know why I'm saying it as if it's past tense. Yes. Yes, gravity is my one true ally. <laughs> it is OP, but it has no allegiances, so it can be just as OP for me as it can be for the environment. Which is funny, because gravity kind of is part of the environment, but I'll use it however I want. Coming around. Backstab's still just so effective. This area, as well as Sholva, just really harkens back to Dark Souls 1 with how effective backstabs are. I honestly think that's very intentional on FromSoft's part, because they heavily nerfed backstabs, at least in the form that they had existed in Dark Souls 1, and I think this is a bit of giving back to the player returning to some of the older systems while 
at this. <laughs> I just don't understand this game. How did he make it all the way down here? But I want to get some poison off on this guy first off, and then I can face him in pitched combat. Just to get that little extra free damage as I advance. I'm not going to make the first move. That's on you. You're poisoned. I can wait you out. Ah, dear. I regret that. There we go. Swing and another swing. Bingo. Looks like they have almost 3,000 health. Exact. I'd never actually taken the time to check and see, but... You know, scratch that, considering that the DLC areas scale based on your level, not level, but soul memory, I suppose I can't know for certain exactly how much health he had for real, since even whatever number I saw there was just a scaled amount. It could be that it scales up to a nice round hole number like 3,000, but knowing from soft, I kind of doubt it. That system was nowhere near... Oh. I knew that if I could sneak behind the corner of the hallway at the end, that I was in the clear, I could Estes up and take the elevator down to the bonfire. But I also knew that the one thing in the entire game that could stop me at that point was a great arrow to the back. Oh dear, I want that elevator. I'm not going to wait, I'm not going to wait. Worth. I was I was really hoping that fall wasn't going to kill me, but I was under no illusions that if it did, it was going to be my whole fault. But yeah, let's see if I can actually run down. This is a bit silly, but again, I'm feeling kind of cocky today, as I'm sure it's showing. Uh, clearly, through all of my various deaths as I've been playing, but it's worked out for me thus far, and I and the way is open for me, so I should actually be able to run right on through this encounter. And once I'm here, yeah, that entire counter just got bypassed. So long as you're running when you aggro him properly, uh, you can actually close the distance before his throne sword comes out and just breeze right on past. I definitely wanted to clear through the area normally the first time around, but now that I grabbed all the loot, I am totally okay with just dropping down and running right on through. Faros cares not for their games, and I would already in passed through that place about twice, so I wanted to just head right on down. Do I have the smelter wedge? Oh. Hmm. There are smelter wedges somewhere. I just don't remember where I left them. This is what happens when you're not being careful to explore the entire area as you progress through. I just want everyone to look at my example, take note of it, and remember to themselves, no, don't do this. Don't be necromanticer. Don't get all the way down to the fume night with a single, single smelter wedge. Nobody likes that. That's 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 crap. That's bad. Don't do that. Okay, so once more, let's let's head back up. I believe I'm trying to think cuz it's definitely hmm. I'm fairly convinced that it's up this elevator path. But I'm not to is it across the bridge over in Maldron's area? That might be where. Because I know that there's a chest there, and I know that you get all four smelter wedges from a chest someplace. So I think across this iron chain is going to be where it's at. I'm not 100%, but that's what makes the most sense in my head. So I'm going to go with that gut reaction. Yeah, as you can see, my soul memory has scaled up enough that the one-handed attack will no longer kill those guys in one shot. I mean, two hits. One two-hit combo, so... That's a little bit sad to see, but 
that's how these DLC areas work. At the start, I was really excited because I got that one shot with the two-hit combo, but it couldn't last. Come on. Ah, humbug. Oh my gosh, this dodgy son of a gun. So annoying. Oh, Jesus. Please, Maldron. I'm begging you. Be a bro. How? The poise on this guy. It's sickening. I literally hit him four times with an ultra great sword. And he's rolling around like it's Christmas. Ugh, oh, so much salt. So much salt. Let's not be an idiot this time. Let's let's not do that. It was my fault. It's just frustrating because that's not how the rest of the game works. If he was a regular enemy and not a DLC monstrosity phantom, that totally would have killed him or at least staggered him long enough for me to make some distance and then heal. But as I've been saying, this whole time. The DLC is about making the strategies you've learned in the rest of the game less effective. Parrying, however, still just as effective for the first hit. He is now going to run away, and there's nothing I can do to stop him, since he can't be staggered. Did I mention I'm salty? But, here we are. No, that's bonfire aesthetics? I mean, I'm here already, so I am going to take it on, but gosh, that really makes me wonder where I missed out on a chest. You know, I'll look it up after this episode. I'll cut it after I clear... <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> Much better. I will cut it after I... <clears throat> <laughs> it's like they, they, they specifically know that I'm in a bad mood already because of Maldron's shenanigans and so they're not gonna give me the hits that they know they should but yeah I will cut it after I disactivate the uh, Ashen Idol down here that seems oh come on that's that last little bit still there fine there you go I know you'll pop right back up like a friggin daisy in just a second but I just needed you to stop for just long enough for me to breeze past you. Oh, come now. The full, charged up Super R2 with the Flame Spout only does 300 damage. I am... You know... Oh, my God. Oh. The game knows. The game knows. It knows and it's mocking me. Ay -ay -ay. Come on, Maldron. What you gonna do? You're gonna stagger your blows so that they all hit me? Fancy. Uh, sporadic rolling. It's a sign of panic. It's a sign of me not playing smart. It's a sign of me wanting to get the hell away from Maldron so that... There we go. Now I can run in, deactivate this curse... Deal with Maldron on his own. Deal with these frigging possessed armors without them popping up like daisies. There we go. Now, from here, I probably can escape. Oh, nope, nope. Definitely cannot escape. <clears throat> you know, I think this is a good place to cut it. I can come back to the playthrough when I'm less salty, less overconfident and handle that encounter properly. Go back up, find where I left the smelter wedges, come back down, kill Raim, take the fact that I killed him, take that into Alon's memory, kill Alon, unlock this last door here in the foyer, go in, kill the last little bit of Nishandra, 
and be done with the DLC. It's great, I love it, but ooh, has it got me on edge. So, thank you all for watching. I hope you'll stick around for the next episode when hopefully things go a little bit more my way. I will see you all next time.